here's just some reasons I know the King James Bible is the infallible Word of God. Thank you guys so much for coming back and watching another one of our videos. And um, just don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you will, please. And uh, don't forget to share the videos that we put out and try to help folks to see the truth of the Word of God. And this is a very um, controversial subject as well we are discussing tonight. But we're going to be talking about how the King James Bible is the infallible only true and living word of god and uh, i'm just going to take you through some things the reason i believe it is and uh hope it helps somebody but i more than likely the comments will be turned off on this because there are so many foolish people out there that are just not saved and don't know the truth and they don't have the witness of the holy ghost to tell them the truth of things so they just want to sit and argue and argue and argue and I'm just not on here to argue. I'm on here to spread the truth and just let God himself do the watering and doing the growth in people's lives. This will probably be a two-part video because it's going to take a little while to go through all these things. And uh, so if you watch this one, don't forget to watch the next one to get the whole meaning of what I'm trying to get to tonight. There are many preachers and teachers across our land that talk about preferring and using the King James Bible. But there's not many that will tell you that it's infallible, that it is the perfect word of God. Not many will tell you that. Um, they are taught in college. A lot of college professors are taught to, to use it maybe or prefer it or recommend it, but they're not taught to believe that it is the infallible word of God. Well, let me tell you, there's no college professor that's going to tell you that. That has to be told to you by God himself and the Holy Ghost bearing witness that it is the true word of God. That's the only way you're going to believe in the truth of the King James Bible. I thank God I don't never had that problem. From the time the Lord saved me, I knew King James was the only word of God. These other perversions we're getting ready to show have too much missing and added too much there too. Um, I don't have to play make-believe with anyone about the Word of God. I believe it. I believe the King James Bible is preserved, it's infallible, and it is the true and living Word of God. It contains. It not only contains the Word of God, it is the Word of God. I'm absolutely sure of that. And uh, one thing we have to look at is God promised us that He would preserve His Word. In Psalms chapter 12, He says, The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from generation forever. So there's one verse that tells us that the word of God, the true word of God, is going to be um, kept from generation to generation from now on. Then we read in Psalm 100, he says that his truth endureth to all generations. And Jesus said in John 17, 17, that the word, God's word is truth. So there's two verses we know God said that his word would be preserved for every generation that ever lives. And uh, we know we have it. The King James Bible is it. We know that. These words stated very clearly that God's preserved word must be available to us today because God promised to preserve it for us. There must be an infallible book somewhere and we believe it to be the King James Bible. And uh, a lot of people say, but all the translations uh, are God's word, not just one. That's impossible. There's no way that that could be. Uh, the newer perversions contain different readings, and God is not the author of confusions. We know that in First uh, Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. If all the versions were the word of God, then where are the corrupt and perverted versions that we are warned about in 2 Corinthians 2.17 and Jeremiah 23.36? If everyone is innocent, then where are these perversions? Right? You've got to think about that. They are, uh, they're there, and a lot of people is using them today and don't even realize it. We're going to go through and look at all of the reasons that I believe, and I believe I can prove to you that the the King James Bible is the true and living word of God that's translated directly from the men that God desired for him to translate them through. 
And, uh, but I just want to look at some of these other perversions, okay? Here's just a few examples of why I believe also that the King James is the Word of God. In the authorized King James Version, Matthew verse 9 and verse 13 says, For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay, we know that verse. The New Idiot Version, or, or the NIV as they call it, says, For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. They leave out repentance. And do you wonder why that whenever you put any video on social media or anywhere, why you get hammered so bad about people saying, the Bible does not say that. You don't have to repent. This is why, guys, because the Bibles that they're reading don't even have it in it. does not have anything about repentance. Uh, the NAS or the uh, New American Standard Version says, for I did not come to call the righteous but sinners. For I, and then the NWT, for I came to call not righteous people but sinners. You see what I'm saying? None of them uses the word repentance. It says nothing about sinners to repentance. It says nothing about that. Uh, here's your one as well. The authorized King James Version, Matthew 18 and verse 11 says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. The New Idiot Version or the NIV, omitted, taken out. It's not in there. The NAS says footnotes cast doubt. The NWT omitted. They, they took that out. And you look what it's saying. I mean, that's a pretty important verse, wouldn't you think? For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. We know the Son of Man is Jesus Christ. And if you will notice in all these newer perversions of the so-called so Bible, they call it, is always attacking the sonship of Christ. And it's always attacking what God says in the King James Bible. And if you notice, they're always attacking the King James Bible. You never hear that this world attack anything else. They don't like the King James Bible because it's truly God's word. Um, right here, you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The New Idiot Version says, you do not know the day or the hour. And then the NAS says, you do not know the day nor the hour. And then the NWT says, you know neither the day nor the hour. It don't say anything about the Son of Man. Like, as I said, they're taking the Son of Man out of the Scriptures. They're trying to do away with Jesus because he's the only way to God. And uh, taking that sonship away, they feel like they've done something. Here's you another good one. Luke chapter 4 and verse 8, the authorized King James Version says, Get thee behind me, Satan. The New Idiot Version, omitted. The next one, omitted. The next one, omitted. And I looked in all the newer translations, 85% of them omit that verse. Get thee behind me, Satan. I mean, why do it? Why take that out? 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And that's the authorized King James Version. Then here is the New Idiot Version. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. I mean, it's, it is crazy how that they... They take out these things and make it look so innocent. Uh, here's uh, some uh, how they do away with the preeminence of Christ. Matthew one twenty five, the author, authorized King James Bible says the firstborn son. The New Idiot Version says a son. The NAS says a son, and the NWT says a son. Uh, Matthew eight twenty nine uh, says Jesus, thou Son of God. That's an authorized King James Bible. And the New Idiot Version, just Son of God. Son of God. Son of God. You see how they, they do away. This, uh, in Mark 9, 24, in the King James Bible, it says, Lord, I believe. And in the rest of them, it says, I do believe. They take out that Lord. They're trying to do away with the Lordship of Christ. That's what they all do. They're taking away of him being the Son of God. They try to take away with him being the Lord. Uh, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 2 where it says Lord Jesus Christ all three the NIV and those other two it's all omitted, taken away, taken out I have here somewhere I'm not going to go through and look for it but I have here somewhere where it's, it's stated that 40 some thousand verses are taken out of all of the newer versions all of the newer versions I mean that's kind of disturbing wouldn't you think I mean think about that 
Um, and like I said, I'm going to have the comments turned off on this because you have a lot of religious people that's going to fight over their new idiot version. And, uh, or it can also be called the non-inspired version because none of these newer versions are inspired. And I'll go ahead and be honest with you. I don't believe anybody can truly get under Holy Ghost conviction under anything but the King James Bible preaching. I believe that with everything in me. Um, we have reasons for that. I, we will get to it here momentarily. Okay, the first reason that I want to give you here and the reasons why I think that the Bible is authorized King James Version is of God and that's the only word of God is the first reason the authorized version was translated under a God-ordained English king. The main subject of the Bible is the kingdom which God intends for Christ to reign over, right? the Lord Jesus Christ, who will be crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. According to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16, and uh, then Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, the Bible says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? And like the modern versions, the King James Bible was translated under a king. In fact, the king's name was James. Now get this, which is the English word for Jacob. Um, whom God renamed Israel because he had power with God and with men, Genesis 32, 28. And you just think about that a minute. Authorized King James Bible. Now you think about that. Um, tell me that's not one good reason to believe that there's more to this King James Bible than folks like to give it any credit for. Um, second thing, I believe that we hold the King James Bible, the true and living, infallible word of God in our hand because it has no copyright. All other versions of what's supposed to be of the Bible are copyrighted except for the King James Bible. And uh, it does not forbid anyone from reprinting the authorized King James Version of the Bible. For nearly 400 years now, we have been printing millions of copies of King James Bibles without requesting any permission from anyone. Praise God. You know why? Because it's God's Bible. It's not a man's Bible. It's God's Bible. So we don't need permission. God has already given us permission through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to spread his word, to put it out there. Praise God. There's been over 900 million copies of the King James Bible printed without anyone paying any royalty to anybody. This cannot be said of the newer translations the new bibles are the works of men but the king james bible is a divine work of the holy ghost praise god the term authorized was traditionally applied to the king james bible alone for this is the one and only book which the holy spirit has blessed and used for many many years the fact that it bears no copyright allows praying ministries throughout the world to print millions of copies each year for the mission field and to give out to the lost and dying world that needs the word of God. And that's why I know that the King James Bible is the infallible word of God. And the next reason, this will probably be the last one on this, this video, um, and then we will make a separate video to go through the rest. Uh, the third reason that I believe that the King James Bible is the infallible word of God, because God always translates perfectly. The words translate and translated occur three times in the Bible. And God is the translator each time. The scholars insist that the King James Bible cannot be infallible because it's, it is only a translation. But what I want these, these scholars to realize is, do you suppose that such scholars have checked 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 10 where it says we are told that it was God who translated Saul's kingdom to David? Um, what about in Colossians 1.13 where that Christians have been translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ? You see, our God is perfect in his way of translations. Um, God was the one doing the translating each and every time. What about in Hebrews 11.5 tells us that God translated Enoch, that he should not see death. You know, um, what do you think about that? If God does the translation, then it's perfect. The New Testament writers would quote the Old Testament, Matthew 1, 23, um, Mark 1, 2, Luke 4, 4, John 15, 25, and there's a few more that had to translate from Hebrew to Greek because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, but they wrote in Greek. So if a translation cannot be infallible, 
that even the New Testament in the original Greek isn't infallible because it contains translations from the Hebrew text. Obviously, God assisted them in their translating. God had his hand in all this when he translated the King James Bible. Uh, and he assisted the King James translators as well. The scholars will never understand this, for most of them have quenched the Holy Spirit in their own lives by looking to higher education for truth rather than seeking the Lord's leadership. You know, that's what's wrong with a lot of people today. The reason they'll fight you that the King James Bible is not the only infallible, perfect word of God, and they don't believe it's infallible. The reason why is the Holy Ghost is not living inside them to tell them that it is. Because if you ever notice, the ones that are always... Uh, the ones fighting against that King James is not. He's a, he's a King James Bible believing only. You know, you get that a lot, especially in comments and stuff on social media. And yes, I am a King James only. It's the only infallible word of God. Hallelujah. And uh, the reason I believe that because the Holy Ghost bears witness within me. I don't take man's word for it, but I believe my book, I believe my Bible is infallible. I believe it's perfect from every period, from every amen to every exclamation point, even to the words it's in italic, because we're going to get to that probably in the next video of why those words are italic. And these men that wrote this book, they were honest. They did not take anything out and didn't add anything there too. And if they did add it, that's why they put it in italics is to show you and prove, hey, we added this so this sentence would make more sense to your way of understanding, your way of speaking because of our English, the way we talk. So yes, absolutely, the Word of God is infallible. The Holy Spirit who inspired the Word of God through holy men of God, Second Peter chapter 1, is quite capable of guiding his servants to keep the words which Jesus told us to keep in John 14. In essence, the KJV translators were merely instruments which God used in translating and preserving the perfect word of God. In fact, they said themselves in the dedic dedicatory to the authorized version, this is what they said, because we are poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known to the people of this world. You see, they, they had God on them. These men back in that day had God on them. I know the King James Bible is the Word of God because God is very capable of using anyone He pleases at His very own instruments of righteousness in order to preserve the Word of God. That's another reason there, I believe, that the Word of God is infallible, which is the King James Bible. And I let you, I read a few verses to you there earlier about how that they've omitted these things. Go look it up yourself. Just type in, compare like King James Bible to the New Idiot Version or NIV, and then look down through there and look at the differences. You look how many times they take Jesus out. I believe Jesus is taken out in the New Testament. The, the word Jesus itself is taken out 40 some times. Why would you take that out? And what do they put in place of it? He or something like that. You, you understand? And in case anyone didn't know, the ones that actually print the um, uh, NIV, the ones that print that, did you know that they also print sexual books and uh, pornography type books as well? And then they run the, their uh, so-called Bibles through that same printing system. God help us. Lord help us. But anyways, don't forget to watch this next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please share this. Folks need to hear the truth about what the Word of God is. And I just, I'm just i not here to tell you, if you're not using the King James Bible, you will never, ever understand the things of God. You're not going to understand it because you're reading a man and you are reading the devil's books. That's exactly what they are. They're not Bibles. You'll never hear me call them a Bible. Sometimes I might slip up and say it, but I will never, ever consider it to be a Bible. It is a book that has been written by Satan himself to try to come, <clears throat> just to try to get people away from what the Word of God really is. And another thing, the reason people don't like this book, the King James Bible, is because it reproves. It has the word repentance in it many times. And that's why folks don't like this book right here. So anyways, don't forget to share this. You know, we love you all. We just try to give you the truth. Never try to hurt nobody. But if you get offended, so be it. I'm so sorry. To God be the glory. I say and do what he tells me to say and do. And that's all I can do. So if it bothers you or offends you, get it right. Fix it. It's not me. It's the word of God and it's God talking. So anyways, hope y'all have a good weekend. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving as well, but we'll try to get part two on probably tomorrow. God bless.